What if Superman had a sidekick? This is Comic Storian. I do audio dramas of comic books, so you know what to buy at your local comic book store. And today is World's Finest 7 and 8, where we're going to discover the idea of Superman's sidekick. The city of Gotham on a doomed planet. The ground rumbles beneath the feet of two scientists as they push their teenage son into a rocket that will carry him to safety. As the rocket speeds away, the husband and wife share one final embrace as the planet explodes around them. David watches as his Earth is destroyed, and then the rocket splits through the very fabric of the universe, disappearing. Meanwhile, on our Earth, the United States is in awe as a crack of light appears over the country. The U.S. Air Force scrambles their jets, but the Batwing arrives first. You know... You could just wait to see this thing rip into the sky. Robin points out from behind Batman, warning alarms beginning to sound as a rocket ship flies through the rip in the sky careening straight at them. The rocket passes harmlessly through them and keeps going. No damage at all. Any sign of the ship? Batman asks and Robin nods, pointing. Well, I advise we follow the guy in the red cape, he says as they watch Superman gently place the rocket in the forest. The trio of superheroes gather as the rocket opens, revealing the teenage David. Where am I? Who are you people? He asks in fear, and Superman introduces himself, explaining that David has made it to Earth. Th then it worked? They did it? David says in surprise, and the trio are confused. But David quickly explains that his parents created a hyper-time drive that would allow the ship to travel through the multiverse. His story tracks, the Flash travels to parallel Earths through vibration phasing, and that craft ghosted right through us before it slowed down. Batman says the Superman, who then turns back to the boy. That's quite the achievement, David. I'd very much like to meet the scientists who found the key to the multiverse, Superman says. But as David sits down, tears in his eyes, he explains that his world is gone. It exploded. My parents sent me away so that I wouldn't die with them. Robin reaches out to console the young man, but David begins to glow with an intense heat. What's happening to me? He begins to shout as everything around him begins to burn, forcing Batman and Robin to step back. But Superman gets them to safety and stops the flames with his super breath. He then moves to the scared young man, trying to calm him down. David, it'll be okay. Your stress indicators are off the charts. Try to calm down. David manages to get his fear under control and calm himself, his body returning to normal and the flames having stopped. What is this? What's wrong with me? David asks as he looks at his smoking hands in surprise. Superman promises him that they're going to find out, and Batman nods, telling Superman to go on without him, that he wants to look into something. But before Superman could leave David, Robin stops them. Wait, are you going to take him to the fortress? Can I come? He never lets me go anywhere fun. Robin asks Superman. Superman nods with a smile, putting Robin on his shoulders. And they leap into the sky, with Robin beginning to cheer, ignoring David's cries of fear. Up, up and away! Robin shouts in joy. At the Fortress of Solitude, Superman shrinks down the three of them and they head into the bottled city of Kandor. There, the scientist, Kim Da, uses Kryptonian tech to discover that David stores solar radiation much like Kal-El, which superheats his body. Kim Da believes that with some training, David might be able to control his powers, and he gives him a special suit that will help him. Superman thanks them, and the trio then reappear in the Fortress of Solitude, but when they arrive, they're greeted by an emergency message from Batman. While Robin is speaking with Batman, David finally asks the question that has been burning inside of him. Do you have cities on this earth? Do you have Gotham? We do. Superman tells him, and David suddenly gets excited, wanting to see his parents in this world. Batman says that might not be the best idea, Robin says, turning back to them. But David is insistent, wanting to go see his parents. A short time later, they join Batman on a rooftop in Gotham. He motions to David's parents, eating on a nearby balcony. Before Batman can say anything else, David leaps into the air, flying over to his parents with his new powers. He calls out to them. He flies down trying to hug them, but the people are shocked and angry at this teenager that insists that he is their son. In a blur of motion, Superman grabs a hold of David and pulls him away, leaving the parents sad and confused. Son, listen to me. These individuals also had a boy named David, but he died when he was three. I'm sorry, but for their sake, do not reopen their wounds. 
So Batman takes David, Robin, and Superman back to the Batcave, while Robin tries to console David on losing his parents a second time. Batman and Superman talk about what to do with the superpowered teen next. Can you? Superman begins to ask, but Batman shakes his head, explaining that he isn't equipped to train a superpowered sidekick, and that they should still keep their identities a secret from David for some time. Superman finally nods, admitting that he is all David has. Congratulations, Clark. I think you just became a father. Batman says, putting his hand on his friend's shoulder. But Robin walks over, telling the pair that before they do anything else, he thinks that David needs to feel a little less lonely and make some friends. So it's a short time later that the Batcopter lands on Titan's Mountain. David and Robin step out and they're greeted by a team of brightly costumed super teens. These are the Teen Titans, Robin says with pride, motioning to his new friends. Some time passes. Speedy grins as he draws his boxer glove arrow. You sure about this? He asks, and David shakes his head. <laughs> no, but Kid Flash cheers Speedy on. Yes, he shouts. Speedy fires, and David manages to blow up the arrow right before it reaches him, making a loud crack a hoom that echoes throughout the valley. Everyone steps forward, cheering David on, with Robin guessing that superheating the air acts the same as the lightning makes thunder. Ha! That's your superhero name! Boy Thunder! Speedy shouts. As everyone gathers around their new friend, Donna pulls Robin aside, telling him to be careful because she senses something is off with David. It's later that David is working alongside Superman, learning the ropes of superheroing while stopping a volcano from destroying a town in Costa Rica. With the town safe, the pair joins Supergirl, who is helping with the evacuation. As the trio talk about how to make a normal life for David, they're interrupted by an emergency message from Batman. I need some help, fast. Batman tells Superman, explaining that the villain known as The Key is broadcasting through all media within Gotham City. Batman patches Superman's comms through so that he can hear the Justice League villain monologuing, explaining that he is flooding the city with psychotropic gases that gives everyone in the city antimophobia, which is the fear of doors and windows, effectively trapping everyone where they are, meaning that the doctors can't get into their patients' rooms. Firefighters can't help people from burning buildings. Police officers are trapped in their cars and precincts. Five billion and untraceable currency unlocks the doors. I've given the authorities remote delivery instructions. What happens next is up to them, the key says as he finishes his message. Superman grabs a hold of David, speeding off to Gotham as Batman keeps talking. I have a friend of ours working on an antidote, but it'll take time. I could steer you to the most urgent crises from here. You're not joining us? Superman asks him, and Batman sighs, explaining that the gas has affected them as well. For all intents and purposes, Robin and I are locked in the Batcave, he explains. David and Superman arrive at Gotham General first, pulling open ambulance doors and pushing people into the hospital. Inside, Supergirl is cutting through the walls so that the doctors can reach their emergency patients. Next, Batman directs Superman to fires throughout the city, but tells David that he has a different mission for him. Head due west until I say when. Go! Batman shouts at him, and as Batman and Robin continue to work from the Batcave, they direct David to a coal mine where the miners are trapped inside with deadly methane gas building up. You cannot use your heat powers. All you have to do is throw a switch, Batman explains. He tells David that the doors have been accidentally locked from the outside, so all he has to do is flip the emergency switch and it'll release the mine doors. Got it! David says, finding the switch. He flips it and waits, but nothing happens. He resets it and flips it again, but still nothing happens. The door's broken! It's not unlocking! He shouts and Batman nods, telling David that he will have to use a controlled heat beam to cut through the lock without detonating the mine. Why can't Superman? David asks in fear of his own powers, but Batman explains that both Superman and Supergirl are busy with the fires and can't be redirected. Just use enough power to slice through the lock and no more. You can do this. Batman offers words of encouragement and David begins to cut. But he begins to shake, fear taking over his body, and he finally turns, flying away. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, he whispers over the comms as he flies away. Batman patches through to Superman, who turns from his fire. I see it. I'll be there as soon as I can. And David sits under a tree, 
a short distance away from the mine. Memories of his dying world flashing through his mind. Of all the people that he couldn't help. Of all the ones he left behind. Finally, he turns back to the mine below. A look of determination filling his eyes and he leaps into the air. When Superman arrives, the doors have already been opened and David is helping the miners to safety. All good. Where to next? Superman tells Batman, and Batman thanks him, telling him that the ordeal will be over soon. Remember when I said I had someone working on an antidote? Batman asks, but Robin interrupts their conversation. Can I say it? I'm dying to. Hey, Superman, look up in the sky, Robin says with glee. In Gotham City, the scarab is flying overhead, with the blue beetle dropping the antidote over the city. It's a short time later that Batman and Superman have tracked the key to his lair. And that's when they find it empty. The villain having escaped through one of his doors into a void. Elsewhere, the key walks into his other lair. You failed. I am not at this moment rich beyond my dreams. That's failure. The voice calls out. I didn't suspect Superman would complicate matters. Him or his new sidekick. The key growls. Joker suddenly grins wide as he turns in his chair. A sidekick, you say? Oh, I do love sidekicks. They're all so delicate. <laughs> to be continued?